Hi, everyone. Deborah Hamilton. Sorry, I'm a little late. I actually was on and then we thought we had technical difficulties, but we didn't. So I'm so glad all of you are here for the MAP Community Program today. It has been a very busy day for me, and I'm so glad so many people are coming to hear about the MAP program and also about what to do with your pets in the event something happens to you. So if you read the flyer for tonight's meeting, we're going to focus on having a discussion about what happens uh, when you pass away or if you're sick before you pass away and you haven't made a plan for the care of your pets uh, in the in the show world. We always come to the aid of our countrymen. So if you have a purebred dog and you're involved in the show world, or if you have a breeder, we're always worried about what's going to happen. And when I posted the topic for tonight, it was near and dear to my heart because three people who I knew very well in the dog show world passed away. Uh, and one person who was a client of mine didn't pass away. And all of them left dogs behind. Um, and and the, then the outcomes weren't necessarily what they wanted. Um, it's just been really an interesting evening. So before we go any further, I usually check in with everyone to see how they're doing, to ask about their pets uh, and where they're from, because I like to make this a real community setting. So it's about community. So I'm Deborah Hamilton, of course, and Junie is here. And one of our frequent flyers, Kathy McNamee is in the background because she's staying with me. She's actually an Irish setter owner, and some of you have seen her as um, a member of the community, but she's going to sit behind us and talk to us. Um, I see that Jan is here. I see Holly is here. Uh, Sally, of course, is here. Elizabeth, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Ingrid, so good to see you again. Stephanie, welcome. And Dee Dee, welcome back again. So um, let's start with uh, Sally. So you can give everybody the 911 or 411 on how we do this. Um, how are the girls? The girls are great. It's stormy and rainy and slippery, but um, in the 50s, so we can't complain. Great. And you're in Connecticut. So um, it's been pretty cold. It was like 32 degrees like two days ago. Yeah, um, but better than last week, we had loads of 18, and uh, my dogs were kind of dancing across the ice and crusted grass, but um, now they're curled up in quilts, and my husband is back from traveling, uh, cooking uh, special dinners for each of them, so life is good here. Wonderful. Um, so, Jan, do you want to check in? How is Tonka? Oh, I, we're all good. Thanks, Deborah. And um, yeah, sorry, my camera's off. I was in the eating dinner. <laughs> That's okay. Turn it off again. That's fine. I'll turn, turn it off again. Here. Eat dinner. Absolutely. I'm just so glad everybody's here. Um, so hi, Kalina. Good to see you. Uh, Susan, how are you doing? And who is Ma how is Maggie doing? Maggie's doing okay. And actually, I connected with a uh, behaviorist here, a trainer. And so... She's going to do an evaluation on December 11th to see if she can work with Maggie to do some training. And I spoke with her today and I'm hopeful that we can see some good things happening. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yay. Oh, and I see Holly and a guest um, are in the car household. How are you doing? How are the babies, Holly? The two boys, Wizard, Wizard and, oh, I'm sorry. You have to unmute yourself. Wizard and does anybody remember? Thunder. Also? Thunder. I knew it was, I was going to say lightning, but it's thunder. <laughs> Sorry, I was wrong. So it's Oops. wizard and thunder. Yes. Everything good? Um. Yeah, they're good. He's, oh, he's rolled over on his back with the feet up in the air. Well, of course he is. That's absolutely <laughs> the way they are. So. <laughs> Well, uh, welcome back. We're so glad you're here. Hopefully you've uh, gotten some things done. Um, Ingrid, how are you? Long time no see. I'm doing well. Thank you. Trying to stay healthy. Absolutely. It's Who's great right seeing you live and in person. I know. It, I'd love to see live and in person too. That'll be soon. Um, who's on your lap, Ingrid? So this is Rocco. <laughs> nice. Hi, Rocco. I'll try. <laughs> We're having a storm. I'm also in Connecticut. So it is. Uh, and this is a uh, beanie jelly bean. And oh. I have two others. Yeah. Oh, one horse. So 
and the horse. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so Kalina wrote and said she's out X and the dog, so she'll be back. Um, let me check in with Didi. How are you, Didi? Welcome back. Thank you. I hope you can hear me. Yep, we can. Absolutely. Okay, good. And I how are the kids? Set up now. Um, I drug out my old laptop and just set everything up so that I would be looking straight at the camera instead of over here in the corner somewhere. Um, and I am about halfway through with module three now. I'm, oh, good. I'm, I'm making progress. Awesome. And that's only because I have, instead of eight animals, I actually have 12 here because four of them are foster dogs. Yeah. So I have to include them in you the do. program as well. Yeah. So I will be doing a lot of updating as time goes by, but that's okay. That's what this is all about. Absolutely. Well, we're so glad you're back. Iris, good to see you. Iris was just a, a guest on my podcast. So Iris, welcome. Um, tell us a little bit about you and your pet. And um, and, and I know that uh, you're living in Georgia now, so I know where you're from. Yeah, so I'm out of Atl out of, outside of Atlanta, Georgia, and I have three pitbull type dogs. Um, one is probably 13. Uh, that is Sunny. And Dino is six. And no, Dino is eight. And Queenie is six. Yeah. And those are dogs that you absolutely have to make a plan for because they don't uh, really survive if they get to the shelter. So let's make sure we do that. Um, Elizabeth, good to see you. Can you introduce yourself and let us know? Because I, if you were here before, I apologize. I have a sieve for a brain. No, but this is my first time here. Jan invited me. So thank you. I'm happy to meet everybody. Um, and I uh, am doing well. Thank you. I have two uh, beautiful dogs there. I have a golden retriever, Charlotte, and a Labradoodle, Alfie. Oh, wonderful. Well, welcome to Charlotte and Alfie and you, Elizabeth. And thank finally, you. Stephanie, how are you and where are you from and what pets do you have? Hello. Um, thanks so much. My name is Stephanie, and I'm in Toronto, and I have a cat named Geoda. We love cats. I want you to know that most people have dogs on here, but let me tell you, I love cats. And my dogs don't necessarily love cats because they aren't exposed to it. But we are a cat family now because my son has a cat. So I love that you're here, and I love your thinking about making a plan for Leota. Is that her name, his name? Yeah, Yoda from Star Wars. Yoda from Star Wars. I love, of course. How did I get that wrong? Sorry. Well, I'm so glad you're here. And I don't think, Kalina, let me know when you're back. Oh, you're back. Great. So, Kalina, how are the babies? Oh, look at you. You're going to spoil us all. So, Kalina has little the baby puppies. puppies. The puppies are good. This is CJ. They're all sleeping now. They're tired them out. Yeah, they're all exhausted. Look at those babies. They don't know that they're international stars. That's it. They just don't know. It doesn't bother them at all. They are what? Five weeks now or six? Yeah. Eight weeks old yesterday. Time is flying. Time is flying. The last one over here. There, it, there he is. Look at him. So cute. Well, I'm so glad all of you are here, and I'm so glad I checked in with everyone and meeting all the new people as well. Um, but tonight, the reason I was putting the um, topic out there is because for everyone who's new and for everyone who's been here before, I apologize, you'll go through it again, but never too much um, to review what MAP stands for. So I built the MAP program when I broke my ankle, had nine dogs, and didn't have anybody to take care of my dogs. Um, so that was a little bit of a wake-up call for me that you know, nobody was going to take care of my nine dogs. So I wrote the map plan, which originally was called I'm not dead yet um, because I wasn't dead yet, but I needed help taking care of my dogs. And most people put all of their plans um, in their wills. And I always get a little frustrated when I give these programs at national um, dog events, uh, where, when people walk up to me and say, Deborah, this is a great program. And I'm so glad you gave it. And um, I have all the plans for my dog in my will. And I usually say to them, well, I'm so glad you know you're going to die, because if you don't die, those plans don't come to fruition. So that's why we're here. So for all the new people who haven't been here before, the one thing I want you to do before anything else, after you get off the call, don't leave now because you're going to hear a lot of great information. But when you get off, is I want you to make a three by five card. And I want you to say on the three by five card, in case of emergency, 
But what you write on your three by five card says, in case of emergency, do not remove these dogs from my home. Please call Susie Smith, Jenny Jones, and Jim O'Brien and have their numbers and they will take care of my dogs. Now, if you don't wanna have a three by five card with people's numbers on your refrigerator, uh, because you don't wanna live in a house like mine that looks like, you know, um, I don't know, information central, uh, make sure you put a card somewhere that says, please do not remove my dogs from the house. Uh, directions for who will come to care for them are in the yellow file, the red file, the green file, the purple file, whatever right next to the refrigerator, right next to the stove, right next to the side door, wherever you're gonna put it, so that animal care and control and emergency services, if they're taking you you know, away, uh, that they know that the dogs aren't supposed to leave and that the people to call are listed right there easily um, because you wanna make sure you make it really easy for them to know that your dogs have backup care and not to remove them. Because once the dogs are removed to animal care and control, it's very hard to get them out for someone who's not you. And if you're unconscious, uh, they might go to animal care and control. And this happened during COVID. So I know it's sort of like the sky is falling chicken little, uh, but it happened to a client. Um, and it happened several times during COVID because people would be put on ventilators and they'd be calling their phone and they were on a ventilator. So they weren't answering their phone. What do you want to do with your dog? They hadn't told their neighbor. They hadn't told their family. And the dogs were given to um, animal care and control. Um, after being maybe left alone for a day or two or a week or two, who knows how long, till somebody found out the dogs were there, uh, they were taken to the shelter. Um, and then after the statutory time of five to seven days, they're released to a rescue. And if they're adopted from the rescue, um, you cannot get them back. If they're adopted out of a rescue because you didn't answer your phone because you were unconscious, you know, you might be unconscious because you're on a ventilator. You might be unconscious because you've had a stroke. You might, you know, be unconscious because you're suffering um, from Alzheimer's and it's early stage. So you don't remember. Uh, so you really need to make sure that that document is up um, somewhere visible. Um, I also uh, highly recommend a nosy neighbor. Uh, because if in fact you're being carried out of your house, even though you're young, um, you want the neighbor to know and have that card with those numbers and say to animal care and control and emergency services, hey, I know who Jan wants to have Tonka go to. It's right here on this card. Um, it, you know, I can call them or you can call them. You'll find a similar card in her house. Now, the neighbor doesn't have to take the dogs. The neighbor doesn't have to do anything except not let the dogs leave the house. And that's really, really, really important. Um, so that's the first thing you're going to do when you hang up, if you're new. Uh, most of the people who've been here um, over the last few well, over the last year, two years almost, uh, probably have it up on their uh, wall already uh, because I'm such a harper on that. I harp on it all the time. It's really important. It really truly is. I also suggest um, having something in your car, not in your wallet, something that can be seen in your car. So, okay, maybe not stick it to the dashboard like I do because I have no class. Uh, maybe stick it in the, you know, uh, little cubby hole, you know, have a colored um, three by five card so that if something happens to you in the car, uh, they know that your dogs are at home alone and who to call. Or if the dogs are driving with you and something happens to you, they know who to call as well. You know, three places we don't think about, but we should. Uh, so the reason I was um, getting everyone together to talk about what happened recently to several of my friends is because we really are human. I know that's unbelievable. Um, I'm going to live forever, as is everyone here, and I hope they do. Uh, however, things happen. And the map plan helps you navigate um, what's going to happen to your pets when you can't care for them short term, long term, short term, meaning you might have a virus, you might um, be undergoing chemotherapy and feel sicker than a dog and can't take care of your dog. But you know what? You really want your dog or your cat laying on your chest while you're recovering. I mean, how many of you here, raise your hand, would want your dog with you or your cat with you if you were recovering, yet you might be praying to the porcelain goddess and making a bowl of food for them. 
you would do, but if somebody could come in and do it for you, it would make your life and your family's life so much easier. Uh, I know my husband broke his shoulder. I use the map plan to help me take care of my pets while I was taking care of my husband. Now I wasn't incapacitated, but I was exhausted. And so it made so much sense to put together the map plan on some form so that I could get a break so that the dogs would get out three or four times a day, catch the ball, do whatever they were doing. Uh, but I could actually take a nap um, when my husband wasn't, you know, he had broken his shoulder. It's a really painful injury. Um, so for those of you who are new, MAP stands for something. So you know that uh, if you went to the website, it'll say, you know, um, the MAP plan, navigating the journey your pet takes when you can't care for it. So the M stands for make a plan. So you have to really sit down and make a plan. What would I want for my dogs if something happened to me, short or long term? Would I want them to stay in my house? Would I want them to go to my friend who's my first choice caregiver? Would I want them to go uh, back to the breeder? Uh, would I want them to go back to the rescue? Whatever it is you want to have happen, you know, think about what it is. So you're making a plan. And then you're appointing caregivers. So that's the A, the first A, you're appointing caregivers. And that is a requirement that only one of the caregivers is a family member. The other two have to be non-family members. And I say that because if you're sick, your family members will be with you. And if you can provide them with backup care for your pets so they don't have to worry, they will thank you immensely. So one family member, two friends, a neighbor, whatever, your breeder, uh, the rescue, wherever you got your dog, um, really important. So uh, pointing caregivers is one of the hardest things to do, but that's why we have workshops, you know, three or four times a year so that people can learn how to find those caregivers. Uh, the second A stands for address the needs of your pet. How many of you know every idiosyncrasy of your dog? Thunder, lightning, medication. Do they like white dogs? Do they dislike black dogs? Do they like cats? Don't they like cats? Do they jump fences? Do they come when they're called? Do they take anything off the counter, including turkey bones? Um, these are things that really you need to address if your pet was to go to live with someone short-term, long-term, or if someone was coming into your house to care for them, because you certainly don't want them to leave food on the counter that might be harmful to your pet and your pet's a huge counter thief and they don't know it, right? And it's gone. Uh, so addressing the needs of your pet. Of course, it means, you know, telling them when the heartworm is due and the next guard is due and their vet you know, appointment is due and whether or not they like turkey or allergic to fish or whatever it is they're allergic to, that's all well and good. But also make sure you tell them if they jump fences, if they run away when they're called, um, if they come when they're called, uh, if they like to play ball or don't like to play ball. These are things that will help the dog um, transition to being in the care of somebody else short term or long term, because it's going to, you know, they're going to know the idiosyncrasies of the dog. And then finally, the P stands for publish. So if you're gonna make this plan, please don't stick it in a drawer. I gave this program in California, cripes, it must be like nine years ago. And a woman went in for routine surgery and didn't come out. And she'd made the map plan. She made the M, she made the A, she made the A, and she died, did not do the P. She put it in the drawer. No one knew she made the map plan and someone came in and said to her husband, who was her executor, who remember, didn't know she made a map plan uh, and said, oh, I know what Susie Q wanted to do. Um, she wanted me to take all the dogs and I'll place them. Well, in the map plan, she had given them all back to the people who she co-owned them with or the breeders. And when the breeders or co-owners came to get the dogs, they were gone. And this woman said to them, and I quote, too bad. They're in great homes and I'm not going to let you know where they are. And if you'd like to sue the executor who gave me permission to place them, go right ahead. And so these are things that really happen. <laughs> you know, they really happen. So if you want your dog to go to your neighbor who says hello to him every morning, gives him cookies through the fence, would love to have him now because he's a little older and not so jumpy. Fabulous. Make sure that's a backup person. Um, you just have to make sure people know. So you want to publish it with 
every caregiver so that if um, Mary and Sue and Jane are your caregivers, they should know about each other because if they call Mary and she doesn't answer the phone, um, they know on the, on the thing to, to call Jane. But if they call Mary and she's out of town, she answers the phone, she gets the message. She goes, yep, absolutely. Leave the dogs in the house. We will be there. And then she'll call Jane or she'll call Sue because she knows they are her backup. You know, she might be first, but she's out of town, of course, because that's Murphy's law. But she'll call uh, Sue or Jane to say, listen, I'm out of town. I'll be back on Monday. Um, can you take care of the dogs? And there are three people working on taking care of the dogs for that period. You have to publish it with your veterinarian. And you're like, what? Are you kidding me? Yes, because if your dogs have to go to the doctors while you're sick, if those people are not on the records with your um, pets, the veterinarian is not supposed to, they may, but they're not supposed to take care of your pet because their VCPR, which is their vet, um, client, uh, patient um, uh, relationship is with you and whomever you write on the file. So what you have to do is say, okay, so the VCPR is that I'm the owner of um, Tonka. However, in the event something happens to me, Sally Anderson can um, bring Tonka in and Susan Capilano can bring uh, Tonka in and Rose Miss can bring Tonka in because then the vet will know that these people, if they bring it in, you have authorized them to get the care necessary for your pet. And of course, the most important person to advise beside your family, which this woman didn't do, is your attorney. Because your attorney has to know what it is that you want um, done with your pets and how you want it done. And in your will, you refer to um, the plan as the map plan. And you can update the map plan as much as you want without having to update your will and your pet trust in most states. I work with attorneys to make sure we do it absolutely according to Hoyle in each state. But um, you want to make sure your attorney knows so that he knows who the three people are. Um, last but not least, you must, 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 must check in with everyone every year because people move, people get sick themselves, uh, people get a dog that doesn't get along with dogs. So the chance of you being able to leave your dog with them goes away. And they don't think about the fact that, oh my God, I said I would take Sally's dog and my dog doesn't like dogs. So you really have to check in with everyone every year. So the, the crux of all of this, you make the map plan, make a plan, address the needs of the pet, appoint caregivers and publish is the crux of the program. Uh, but tonight we are going to address why it's so important. Um, two of my dear friends and Irish setters passed away in the last two weeks. One was ill for a, a, an extended amount of time. So when people got to him, after he passed away, his dogs were not in very good shape. They were thin, um, they were sickly looking because he didn't have anything in place while he was ill to help feed the dogs and let the dogs out and bathe the dogs and cut the dog's nails. So no one really knew how long he was feeling so terrible that he couldn't feed the dogs or let the dogs out or care for the dogs. So that's why we really need to make sure we have backup, especially if we're sick. Um, the other gentleman just went in for a, um, a routine endoscopy and had an allergic reaction to the anesthesia. Now, how we can never plan for that, right? So his dogs now um, are going to be dispersed. I'm I'm pretty sure he has um, a spouse, and so that his partner will take the dogs or people will take the dogs. But that's because we're in the dog show world. If you're a pet owner, you don't have that triple backup. If you're not affiliated with a rescue, you don't have that triple backup where, you know, they're going to come in and they're going to take your dogs and they're going to believe they know what you want. If it's not written down. They really don't know what you want, but at least you have somebody who you know is going to come in. If you are a pet owner, um, you're not going to know. And if you are um, a person who owns a rescue dog, you need to go back and look at your contract because uh, you might not be able to give the dog to the caregivers because you may have a clause in the rescue contract that says the dog goes back to the rescue if you can't care for it. 
So in our in our workshops, we talk about, so how do you get around that? If you want to get around that, well, you have to have the conversation. You have to say, hey, listen, I see paragraph 14 says that I have to return the dog to the rescue. But you know, my neighbor feeds the dog cookies through the fence every day. She comes and takes care of the dog when I'm late home from work or when I'm on vacation. The dog loves her. How can we work this out that she would get spotty if in fact something happened to me? You just have to have that transparent conversation. And if you are someone who co-owns a dog, the dogs can go back to the co-owner or the breeder. That's fine. You put it in there and that's what happens. And you tell the breeder, um, Sally told us a, a few weeks ago that she was on the refrigerator of someone uh, as the person to call in case of an emergency. And she said, they never even asked me. I didn't even know. And I don't think I can take the dog because my dogs her two Irish setters are older and need a lot of care and having another dog around would probably not work so well for her. So if you're going to appoint a caregiver, you have to ask them, you have to make them aware, you have to give them your map plan so they know exactly what it is you want done. Um, so you have to ask. Uh, you, you really want to make sure that um, if you either co-own the dog or you have it from a rescue, read the contract. If there's a first right of refusal or a requirement to return, you have to ask. Now, caveat in that. So um, a client of mine got very sick. Uh, she'd been sick for probably a few weeks. She was septic. So she was getting sick. You know, when you get sepsis, you get sick. It's not something that happens overnight. Um, and so uh, by the time she was taken away in a hospital, in, in an ambulance to the hospital, uh, she was very, very ill. But her dogs had been left alone in the house, not being let out for several days, maybe even a week. So all of you can just conjure in your mind what your house would look like if your dogs, three of them, uh, dachshunds, which by the way, aren't very clean dogs to begin with. I had um, five of them, so I know I love them dearly. They aren't necessarily um, the cleanest dogs. I love them dearly. So uh, they were left in the house and um, the breeder came because in the contract, it said, if you can no longer take care of these dogs, you must return it to the breeder. So the breeder came, was notified that she was in the hospital and she had a very sh small chance of living. Um, and uh, the breeder came, took the dogs, placed the dogs. And you know what happened? She lived. Of course she did. So then she came out of the hospital and wanted her dogs back. And the breeder said, yeah, no. Um, first of all, the dogs were in terrible condition when we picked them up. So we would never return them to you. Well, that's because she was suffering and very sick, but nobody gave her that quarter, right? Because they didn't see that. They only saw, saw the, the results of her being too sick to care for the dogs. And the dogs were now adjusted to a new home. Um, it was probably three months before she was able to call the breeder and say, like my dog's back. The dogs were settled in their new home. None of the new owners wanted to give it back. Um, and the, the contract was fulfilled. She couldn't take care of the dogs, right? Because she was in the hospital for a month, very sick. And then for two months in rehab. Um, so she couldn't, but she had nothing in writing except in her will about how she wanted to care for her dogs, but she wasn't dead yet. So none of that came to fruition. So everything occurred. And she said, but what about this? And what about this? And her attorney said, yes, but that was in your will. It didn't come to fruition because it was in your will. The only thing that came to fruition was that contract you signed with um, the breeder. And that happens with rescues as well. So just be very careful. Um, watch, read your contracts. Uh, and if you want to make sure that your dog goes to your sister, your brother, your husband, your kids, whatever, uh, that you have a conversation with the breeder. Because I can say as a breeder of Irish setters, I have a first right of refusal and I co-own everything that goes out of my door. However, if you came to me and said, listen, I'm writing my map plan. Uh, the neighbor next door feeds the dog when I'm not here, walks the dog, loves the dog. Uh, how can we work it out that, that if something happened to me short-term, long-term, the dog would go to them? And I know what I would say. I'd say, well, introduce them to me. I'll get to know them and um, I will make sure that they know that the backup you have, if something happens to you, will be the backup they have if they get my dog, which is peace of mind for me as a breeder and peace of mind for that person who might take your dog on. So it's not dispositive, using a lawyer word, uh, that you can't give the dog to whom you want if there's a first right of refusal. 
It's simply you have to have that conversation. No rescue really wants the dog back if you have a wonderful home that the dog knows and who knows the dog. They just want to know where the dog goes. And that's the same with breeders. So um, the two of my friends passed away unexpectedly. Um, one of them, of course, I just said, had dogs that were in terrible shape. So the legacy you leave behind is, oh my God, did you see Deborah's dogs? They were so thin and they were this and they were that. Well, it was because I was so sick, I couldn't you know, get out of bed. I could, I was, it was really terrible. Um, so you really want to make sure uh, that you keep everyone um, abreast of what's going on. Uh, and finally, for the young people on here, that means anyone under the age of um, 80, uh, the young people here, uh, recognize we don't have crystal balls. And there was a young woman who shows dogs who we all loved. She wasn't feeling well. Uh, she stayed home from a dog show. Her mother went to check on her the next day and she had passed overnight. So she has dogs too. So don't think because you're young, there's a long time before I'm ever going to have to make this decision we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know. And, um, oh, Elizabeth. Oh, I'm sorry, Elizabeth. Elizabeth had to leave. Um, but I'll look forward to being here next week. Super wonderful. Uh, don't think that because we're young that, you know, it's not going to happen to us. I will tell you, my son was driving home from Thanksgiving. I don't know how many of you traveled for Thanksgiving, but my son did. He was driving back to um, Florida and a tractor trailer truck uh, either lost its tire um, but uh, or, or it threw a tire up and it hit his car. It took the bumper off. It made him swerve, scared that bejesus out of him, but he was thankfully able to control the car. Uh, and when he called his insurance company, uh, they said, well, you're lucky you're alive. They said most of those accidents, there are fatalities. And I'm sitting there as his mother going, holy Toledo but he was just driving down the road. He was minding his own business. He was driving behind a truck and a tire came up or off or whatever. So we don't have that crystal ball. And the reason I put these, these discussions up is because, you know, they're depending on us. Uh, you, we love them every minute of every day. We feed them. We take them for long walks. I mean, I walk 10,000 steps because of Junie. Uh, I should be a toothpick, but I'm not. I will share that with you. Uh, but, you know, if you don't make that plan for where they're going to go and what's going to happen to them, they're probably going to end up in a shelter. So if you're you're like Iris, who has a dog who's sort of a bully breed, they have you know, a difficult time getting out of a shelter. Um, if animal care and control takes them and you haven't made a plan, getting them out of animal care and control is difficult, even for your family. So you really need to decide that it's time to write it down. Um, Dee, Dee decided to make sure that um, she put her paperwork together. So she's taken the do it yourself off my computer, uh, off my website, but it's, it really is important for you to do it even yourself. And I usually give enough information every single week that you understand the why that you have to do this. And then you understand the how. Um, so I know it's only 706. I'm always late, but um, I'd love to check in with everyone to get their feelings about what they learned here today, because it really is important to me um, that, I know I'm like a fire hose and I apologize. However, I am committed. This is something I do for free every Wednesday night at 630 because I'm so committed to making sure that everybody's pet is um, cared for long-term or short-term. So of course, I'm going to go back to Sally first. So what do you what did you get out of this, Sally? Only because Sally and I have been friends for about 30 years and she actually has two of my older girls. So um, it's it's difficult. I'll tell you, honestly, it's difficult because we used to live near each other and now we don't. So Sally had to rewrite her whole map plan. So what did you get out of it tonight, Sally? I think, Deborah, the uh, one important thing for me is what you said about you may not die. And um, with COVID and with the flu illness and all this going around, I think that's very important that you make plans. I actually, while we were talking, um, I got a text from a friend. I'm going to Cape Cod for the weekend with the dog. Just want to let you know. So just stay in touch so people know. And a uh, nosy neighbor, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah, they're, they're wonderful. Our nosy neighbor has told our dog sitter, there are coyotes out tonight. There's a bear in the neighborhood. So it's great. Yep. So 
really yeah. is important. Um, Jan, what have you gotten out of tonight? Um, I think I always just think to myself and never, um, even though maybe it's not, you know, a lengthy period of time, it's always beneficial to go back and look partly because not only can people change, but Tonka's care might change. And so I have to just, you know, just like us and we change as we age, you know, <laughs> he changes. Absolutely. And, and all of a sudden I'm just like, I wonder if everything I wrote regarding his care is really applicable right now. Yes. Current. Yeah. Current. And thank God for, you know, word documents because you can go in and plug something in or take something out. It's like, it's perfect. It's, it really is wonderful. Um, thank you guys. Susan, what about you? Well, I'm for the first time feeling a little bit hopeful about Maggie. I'm making a connection with someone who's a, a trainer for dogs. And, you know, she could potentially become a friend and someone who would work as a backup. And I, so I'm I'm also hopeful because Maggie's behavior hopefully will improve and I'll be more comfortable asking people to provide that. Right. Which is and so important. It, Which it's is. critical. Yeah. So I'm just, you know, I'm breathing a sigh of relief. <laughs> well, let's hope. Keep us posted on that. Kaylina, how about you? Hi. Just to make sure to review everything and make any changes. Like you said, people can change. You could move. People might not be able to take the dogs in anymore. So I have to start thinking about other people that I might be able to have take the dogs instead of the three that I have down already. So if something should come up or like with one of the people, they have construction going on at their house right now and they have no room at all. So, you know, I just have to, start thinking about other people who would be able to take the dogs for me. Yep. Absolutely. When I broke my ankle, the two people who were my backup, one had just broken her wrist and the other one was renovating her kennel. So I hear your pain, you know, they're, they're renovating and they don't have the ability to take it. And who would think of it? And that's Murphy's law, right? Holly, how about you? I know you've been busy. Um, okay. So I found an executor. Yay. And um, that makes me feel really good. And I'm starting to figure out the, um, the sequence of things for, you know, who's going to take care of who and what kind of resources there are if you take my pet. So um, this phone call helped me with that, understanding um, how the sequence would work. Um, and then um, because of this, I started making another book for just, what what if I fall apart, what take care of me? So all my health insurance plans and where to find this, that, and the other thing. Um, but nothing's in effect right now. It's just all on your worksheets, scribbled all over right now. Well, I have to tell you, my secret passion is that if you decide to make a plan for your pet, you then will also make a plan for yourself because many... Right don't even have a will. So if I get you to make a plan for your pet and you have to put it in a will somewhere, then maybe you'll make a will for yourself and then everybody will be covered. So I'm secretly trying to get you to do something you should be doing by pleading with your humanity for your pet. So that's well, why no, I have the will and I have an attorney, but I want to change the attorney tomorrow night. I'll go to a dog training class and there's a woman who works for a law firm that helps with family planning or something. And I'm hoping that this attorney might be, cause I got to set the trust up. Right. So and remember, I'm always available. You don't even have to be a client of mine to help them understand what it is you're talking about. Cause unfortunately a lot of trust and estate attorneys don't understand about making this kind of a, a map outside of the will so that you can change it because we change dogs and our dogs issues change, like Jan said, but they have to know that you don't want to have to change the will all the time. So there's a way to do it. It's just a little different. Um, Didi, how about you? Okay. Well, I'm feeling so much better about everything that led me to this point. Um, and in fact, I have my, my three caretakers lined up. 
I also discussed this with our vet yesterday, so he's aware of it. I'm still in the process of building my, my map plan, which will all end up in a red binder, which is destined to be kept in a cabinet above the microwave in the kitchen, which will be found by emergency first responders if they come into my house and look on my refrigerator and see the big note that's going to be there. Um, I also have the original Mrs. Gladys Kravitz across the street from me, my neighbor, Marcy, who not a thing happens in this house without Marcy peeking through the curtains. So I, I know that, that, that Marcy will be able to help if an ambulance or a fire truck shows up in front. Fabulous. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's coming together and I'm feeling very comfortable about everything so far. I just have a lot of loose ends and details to tie up because I have so many dogs and of course, each one has their own individual needs. And I'm filling out the forms for module three for each one of them. Um, I will probably end up rewriting every, every one of them because I'm, there's always something new that I think of after I've finished another one. Um, Absolutely. That's why we do the workshops and we yeah. all sit together. Somebody will say, oh, uh, my dog, this. And you go, oh, shoot, I just totally forgot. That's my dog, too. So that's why it's always great to work in groups because somebody thinks of something. You're like, oh, I didn't think of that. I could do that. So, yeah, I'm so glad you're you're getting through the modules, which is fabulous. Yes. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Ingrid, how about you? How's it helping you? Um, what can I say? As an end of life doula and having a professionally, you know, being a pet sitter and um, this is my passion is, you know, advocating for humans and pets. So I try to help people get prepared. So this just pumps me up. Um, and I hope you get I, I can't do Ingrid. Excuse me. You have to get prepared for yourself too, Ingrid. Well, exactly. You cannot just talk the talk. You have to walk the walk. So um, it is pushing me to be prepared and fine tune things. And I know firsthand everything that you always say about circumstances and people living or not living, it couldn't be, it couldn't be said truer words because um, I've seen so many circumstances where <clears throat> um, just things fall apart because and everybody believes they will do it until the time comes. And that's why you need redundancy because, you know, Jan is going to take my dogs unless Tonka is sick when I need her to take my dogs and then she can't and she's going to feel really bad, but she's got to think about Tonka. So if I have backup, then she's not going to feel bad because she's going to call Sally or she's going to call Holly because she knows they're there to back her up. So that's the important piece. And as a doula, you know, the family always tells the, the you know, dying parent, oh yeah, I'll take the dog, the smelly little poodle with bad teeth. Um, and that doesn't happen. Um, so wait, one. go ahead, Jan. Now, I was just going to say, as you were talking, Deborah, it reminded me that not only just in case, for example, someone can't take the dog, but let's say they take the dog and it's a lot longer than was planned. So they were thinking, okay, that I don't mind taking, you know, I don't mind taking Junie for a month, but all of a sudden it's three months and I'm going away. So I need to know who you would want if I have to leave or if something happens and I can't take the dog, even if I take them originally. Right. And, and that's such an important piece because that's what happened during COVID. Neighbors said, listen, I don't feel good. I'm going to go get a test. And then, you know, a month later, they're still taking care of the dog because they never got out of the hospital. And that's when animal care and control was called because they didn't know, like you said, who that next person was. And so animal care and control came. So you have to make sure you don't do that. Iris, how about you? Well, for me, it was a good start to think about this. Um, and, you know, it was also a good reminder um, 
that when it comes down to it, that the dogs can go back to the rescue group because that is where I have been volunteering for 10 years. I know all the people there very intimately. So I know right there I have a bunch of resources of people that I can contact and I know that my dogs would be taken care of well. And I know that you know that you have to put that in writing, otherwise it won't happen. That's the thing that nobody understands. So if in fact you do have a first right of refusal with your breeder, if animal care and control doesn't know about it, it doesn't happen. And then your breeder might have might not be able to get there right away. And then all the Megilla starts. So you really need to make sure that everybody knows up front who are going to be on the site. Um, I'm so glad everybody stayed for so long. It's like 20 minutes over. I think I might have to say that it's going to be, you know. 45 minutes from now on, because I, I do. So what I'd like to do every week, I always try to review what the MAP stands for, because it's really important for all of us to remember what the MAP stands for, make a plan, appoint caregivers, address the needs of your pet and publish, really important. Um, and then we talk about the stories of why it impacts. And that's why this week, I chose to talk about my dear friends who passed away. Um, and, you know, if you if you don't put plans in place to take care of the dogs, if you're sick, then when people come in, your dogs might look like the wreck of the Hesperus. And that isn't how you want your dogs to be taken care of if you're ill. Um, and that's not how you want somebody to find your dogs if you're ill. Um, so really make a plan uh, that's going to come into fruition, whether you're dead or alive. Really important. As I said, when my husband broke his shoulder and when I broke my ankle. I didn't have any plan for my ankle, but I had a plan for my husband's shoulder. And I had a plan, as some of you know, I've had body parts changed. So I had a knee put in and a hip put in, and I had the people to back me up to take care of Junie. My husband was here, but then there were two other people who came to the house and gave him a break. Uh, so it just is thoughtful. It gives the dogs a different, or cats, sorry, Stephanie, yes, cats, gives them the idea of this is a person I know. That's the other piece. Please choose people that the dogs know um, and write it down and share what you write down. Because as the woman in California, it, it was very sad for me because she was lovely and she was so proud of the fact that she did the map plan and she didn't publish it. Uh, and her dogs were given to people she didn't want to be given to. So really, it's it's a whole program. As I said, I'm so glad all of you are here. I'm going to let you all go now because I'm crazy when it comes to being overtime and I apologize. Uh, but thank you all so much. I hope I see you all next Wednesday. We meet like this because I think every week we learn something new. What do you think, Sally and Jan? Every week something comes up and, and Susan, every week something comes up new and we're like, oh, or somebody has a question um, that you never thought about. Oh, shit, I didn't think about that. So it's not something that's redundant in that there's always something new to learn. Um, so until next Wednesday, have a wonderful week. Kiss all the dogs for me. I'm not going to name them tonight because I have to now go back and write them down so I'll remember them for next week. Um, everyone take care. And until next week, kiss them all for me. This is Deborah Hamilton, and you're a member of the MAP community. Take care.